Today, I'm gonna to show you three creative portrait ideas that you can capture at home. Hi there guys, how are you doing today? Is that a new blouse you're wearing? Because may I say, it's looking absolutely fetching on you. So today I've set myself the task of taking some self-portraits. I mean, historically, I've not really taken that many self-portraits before, but purely because my job usually requires me to take photos of other people in order to make a living. But seeing as we're all trapped in our homes at the moment and I don't have anyone else to take photos of, I thought I'd give it a go. So I've spent a bit of time thinking up some ideas and I think I've got a few good ones for us to try out. I've decided though for this video, I'm gonna restrict the amount of equipment I can use. So for all three of these images, I'm only gonna use a 50 mm lens and this is just so that anyone at home can easily replicate them. Pretty much anyone who's serious about photography has a 50 mm lens. It's such a versatile focal length and you can pick up third party 50 mils dirt cheap on Amazon and eBay for like less than hundred pounds. So there's really no excuse not to own one. Now, before you start kicking off in the comments saying, I don't have a 50 mil lens. Well, you probably have an 18 to 50 millimeter lens that came with the camera or something. So all you gotta do is zoom that sucker out to 50 mil and there you have it, a 50 mil lens. Right, I've waffled on way too long. So with the power of movie magic, let's travel back in time to this morning when I just got out of bed and let's set up for the first shot. Shot, 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 shot. So here we are in location number one of the day. The bathroom, obviously. So my idea is pretty simple. I'm just gonna get inside the shower, turn the shower head on, get a nice close-up shot of my face as the water sort of cascading down. Should look pretty cool, I hope. Nothing spectacular about this shoot. I'm not gonna be using any flash or anything. We've got a nice big window behind me that's letting in loads of lateral light, so I'm just gonna try and utilize that. Now, of course, there are a couple of hurdles with this. Number one is water. Really don't wanna be handling my camera when I'm soaking wet. It's probably not gonna end very well. So my way around that is to use my smartphone. I compare my phone with my Sony camera, and it'll allow me to compose a shot on my phone and take the shot whilst I'm in the shower. Now, I know what you're thinking. Thomas, you're an absolute barbarian. You can't take your phone in the shower. And to that I say, calm your tits, because we've got a banging solution to that. We're basically going to put my phone in this plastic bag. It's a double sealed bag, which means that no water's gonna get in and I can still use my smartphone through it. Simple. Now I'm gonna confess, I have already taken a few test shots without water just to see how things are gonna work out in terms of lighting and composition, etc. And one thing that I did struggle with is because we're focusing so close, even with the Sony's face detection, it's still focusing on the tip of my nose rather than my eyes because I'm using such a shallow depth of field. So the way I've worked around that is by just switching over to manual focus and because the camera's so close, I can actually just reach outside the shower, look at my phone, and then adjust the focus manually. The third problem, which most of you won't have, is that I'm six foot eight, I'm a bloody giant. So my tripod doesn't actually go high enough to get to head height. So I'm gonna have to sort of wedge myself in the shower so that the shot is composed correctly. But anyway, that's enough complaining. Let's get in the sh Let's get in the shower, so weird. Don't need to say anything. Don't know why I'm getting it. I'm going to review them and see how we're doing. Oh my god, this is going to fall in there. I should have probably put towels down. Yes, I definitely should put towels down. Okay, we've got a few cool ones in here. This time I'm going to compose the shot first because once you've got water pissing down on your head, it's almost impossible to see what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to compose the shot first and just try and... Re shut up. Shut up. As I was saying. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try and compose the shot first and then try and get the focus nailed before I turn the water on because once the water is on you can't see anything. And then I'm just going to try and lock my legs in place so that I'm not moving too much. I'm also trying to position my face towards the light as well because that's the only source of light in this room at the moment. Essentially, I'm just shooting until my, I can hear my buffer filling on my camera and then I'll stop and just let it catch up a little bit and then start again. Oh God. Stop it again. Why, hello there. 
this is the really annoying part in the middle of the video where I appear out of nowhere and just say that if you're enjoying this video then please consider subscribing to the channel and also liking the video. We release new videos every single week and every interaction you have with the channel and also the content that we create really makes me happy. So go on, do your old mate Tommy old boy a favour and hit subscribe. Okay, back to the video. So, setup number two is in place. We're ready to go. Now you might be wondering, Tom, why the hell is there a couple of grand's worth of camera equipment dangling precariously from a tiny little bit of string next to your head? That's a very good question, so I'm glad you're keeping alert. The whole idea of this shoot is that I'm gonna try and make it look like I'm balancing this camera on the end of my finger like you would do a basketball, for example. So in order to do that, I've had to create a bit of a rig. So I've just got two boom stands that I've kind of joined in the middle and then tied the camera from the camera strap using a piece of string. Now, don't worry, I've tested this piece of string. It can carry a lot of weight, so this shouldn't be an issue. Fingers crossed. The other thing I've set up for this shoot is some off-camera flash. Now, this is not mandatory for the setup. It's just that the light in this room isn't very good. So I've decided to use some off-camera flash just to make it look a bit better. But if you want to do this at home and you're not confident with off-camera flash, don't worry about it, just set up near a window. So my lighting setup is super simple. It's just one flash being fired off camera to my left and that's got an Octobox attached to it with a grid on it just to focus the light onto me a bit more. I'm also going to be using the Sony Imaging app as well just to fire the camera remotely. So it means I don't have to keep getting up and down just to check the results and also to fire the camera. And it means that I can also check my composition from down the end of the table, which is really good when you're doing the self portrait. So let's give it a go, I guess. This is probably the scariest thing I've ever done with my equipment for sure. I've given myself a five second timer. Should be plenty of time because obviously I need enough time to put the phone down and also focus on what I'm doing. Let's give it a go. <laughs> that works surprisingly well. Okay, let's take a few more. Hmm? F it. I'm in a glass case of emotion! Sorry, I couldn't resist. So the third option is basically in front of a pane of glass. I've seen loads of people online doing cool stuff with reflections in glass. Super simple, so I want to try it out. I kind of wanted to put a quarantine spin on it, so the idea is that I'm going to sort of smush my face against the window as if I'm sort of looking hopelessly outside of the window just waiting for this quarantine to be cooled off. Oh, outdoors, how I miss you so. One day I will see you again. One day. Anyway, that's the idea. See how it goes. Oh, sweaty head mark on the window now. The hand looks a bit like the scene out of Titanic. I hope none of the neighbours can see because they're going to think I've absolutely lost the plot. Right then, I've gone ahead and spent a bit of time in Lightroom and Photoshop just tidying up my images. So let's take a look at what we've got. First up on our list is the shower portrait that I took first thing this morning. I was actually really pleased with how these came out. I was basically shooting on continuous mode the entire time. So I had almost a thousand images which I had to sift through and find the good ones. Most of the shots were out of focus, but I did manage to narrow them down to these few that I was really happy with, where the lighting was spot on and so was the focus. Initially, I was shooting at about f1.4 just because I wanted to get that really super, super shallow depth of field. But ultimately, this was just way too hard to try and get whilst water was tipping on my head. So I ended up just stopping the lens down a little bit to f2.8, which was much easier to get right. But I think the time I spent on it was well worth it because I'm really happy with the results. One last tip before we move on to the next image. If you're planning on doing this yourself, make sure that the room is well ventilated. I had the window wide open the entire time and the door. If you don't do this, steam is going to build up in the room and it's all going to get inside your lens and your camera and it's just going to cause issues. So make sure it's well ventilated. Okay, so moving on to shot number two, which was our levitation shot. Although the rig itself took a little bit of time to construct, you know, hanging the camera at the right length and also setting up my lights, this was actually a really quick and easy photo to capture. I ended up shooting everything at f11 just so that I could ensure that both my face and the camera were sharp. And I also made a conscious effort to keep the background clear of clutter to make the Photoshop work much easier. Speaking of Photoshop, obviously, in order to make this shot work, I had to do a bit of work in post-production to remove the string which was holding the camera in place. I did this by using a combination of the clone stamp tool and the patch tool. It took me literally two minutes. And finally, there's the shot against the window. 
This was by far the easiest of the three to shoot. All I had to do was smudge my face up against the window, make sure the camera's in the right place. That was pretty much it. It took me less than half an hour to get what I needed. And I think it kind of works. It's definitely a shot that provokes a reaction, which is kind of what you want from a self-portrait, I guess. All in all, I think it's been a pretty successful day. I mean, I'm really happy with the shots I got. But what do you think? Be sure to let me know in the comments below which one's your favourite. Also, if you do attempt any of these images yourself, be sure to let me know on Facebook and Instagram as I'd love to see what you guys create. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'll see you again in the next one.